Now, in my opinion, the version of Hyrule seen in Breath of the Wild is the most interesting. It's huge after all, and there's a lot to see. And one thing that always fascinates me is the enemies seen in the game. Because they are a lot smarter and more realistic than any others seen in the series. And so, because of that, I started to wonder what would happen if these beasts would actually fight each other. In some sort of war. A lot of them have camps, their own weapons, battle tactics and more. So if they would fight, it would be very similar to a real war. And today we will take a look at the Bokoblins and the Little Foes. If they would fight each other, then who would win? Well, let's find out. Now let's start with the Bokoblins. These are often encountered in primitive monster strongholds. They can be found resting inside their camps at night and hunting boars during the day. Now these strongholds are often guarded by Bokoblins on small watchtowers, and if one of them spots you, they will sound their horn, alerting all the others. There are many varieties of Bokoblins, some stronger and some weaker, carrying a number of different weapons like the Boko weapons, but also Hylian weapons like the Soldier's Bronze. Sword. And when they use a wooden melee weapon when near a source of fire, they will actually ignite their weapon in order to burn you, dealing more damage. Now occasionally they can also be found riding horses, using them to travel, hunt and fight other enemies. Sometimes they are even riding on bears, and I have no clue how they did that. However, they aren't as fast as normal horses, but they are a lot stronger. Sometimes they can even be seen attacking travelers, as they can easily beat them. So clearly these beasts are quite smart, quite aggressive, and can certainly trick most travelers, and even sometimes us the player. I have been outsmarted by Bokoblins many times before. However, they also have weaknesses, because at night, they will actually go to sleep, leaving them wide open for an attack. Now on the other side, we have the Lizzle Foes. Weird chameleon-like enemies that are quite different from the Bokoblins. Now often, they will camouflage to their environment and wait for anyone to get near before ambushing them. Now overall, they don't have a base, but if they do, it's located in the water, which gives it some natural protection. But that's about it. And again, there are several varieties of Lizzle Foes, some stronger and some weaker, carrying a variety of different weapons. Now sometimes they can be seen to hunt for fish and defend themselves from enemies, although I will say that's quite rare. But this isn't all. Oh no 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 no, there are also certain special types, like the electrical Lizzle Foes. These have electrified horns that they can use to generate an electric field. Aside from this one, there are many more of them, like the Ice Breath Lizzle Foes. These will spit icy projectiles at you and are actually weak to fire. And last but not least, you have the Fire Breath Lizzle Foes. These can breathe fire and are vulnerable to ice. Now overall, they mostly use the Lizzle Foes weapons, like a spear and their swords that can be thrown like a boomerang. But sometimes they also use Hylian weapons, just like the Bokoblins, all of which are probably leftovers from the Great War. But if these two races would end up in a war, then who would be the ultimate winner? The Bokoblins or the Lizzle Foes? Both of them have their own tactics and advantages, but which one is better overall? Well, first of all, let's look at their tactics and their camps. When you compare the camps of the Bokoblins to the Lizzle Foes, you will quickly notice that our beloved Lizardmen are at a disadvantage. In a lot of instances, they don't have a camp or any form of base, so they might be very good at hiding, but they have no stronghold or anything like it to fall back on. Only in rare cases they have one, so attacking them is quite easy, as long as you see them, while attacking the Bokoblins is a lot harder because of the watchtowers with archers on them. They can warn the others and they can even shoot at you from a distance, so when it comes to that they have a clear advantage, and even their tactics and options are a whole lot better. They can use mounts which makes them harder to kill and also a whole lot faster. Their tactic of lighting wooden weapons can counter certain Lizzle Foes types really well, and overall they are more well organized. The only thing that the Lizzle Foes have 
practice their elemental powers and skills of camouflage, which is certainly effective against foot soldiers, but that's about it. A group of Bokoblin horse archers would completely destroy them. And the same goes for the ones on the watchtowers, which are a lot harder to hit. So when it comes to tactics, I think the Bokoblins have an edge, mostly because of their ability to use mounts. Just imagine a bunch of Lizzlefoes moving across Hyrule Field to attack a base further down the road. And then, all of a sudden, a squadron of Bokoblin cavalry charges in on them with spears and bows. They would get destroyed! The horses would offer the Bokoblin some defense, more movement speed, and a whole lot of knockdown power. To be honest, they would decimate them, especially if the Lizzlefoes are surprised by this attack. If that's the case, they can never organize a good counterattack. And as we have seen many times before, the Bokoblins can easily pull off a surprise attack and are a lot smarter than most people think. But what about their weapons? Well, when it comes to those, there's actually one that clearly wins. As we can see in the game, the Bokoblins mostly use swords, clubs, spears, and sometimes shields combined with one of those. And when it comes to ranged weapons, they just have bows and that's it. Sure, they can use different arrows, but they only have one ranged weapon. Now, all of this is not too bad. It's really effective when taking out travelers and when taking on Link. Heck, I bet they would even be effective in taking down Hylian forces if they were still around in Breath of the Wild. However, when it comes to the Lizzlefoes, things become a little bit more tricky. And that's all because of their weapons. A lot of them are armed with something called the Lizzle Boomerang, which is a curved sword. And these can be used to attack directly, or can be thrown like a boomerang, hitting enemies from afar, and even behind when it comes back. And I bet this weapon would be great when fighting the Bokoblins, because now you can always engage them, even if they aren't close enough for melee combat. So in a way, they have an edge, especially against Bokoblins with shields, because you can hit them from behind with a boomerang sword. They could also use it to take out the Bokoblin archers that are on top of the watchtowers, which is also really handy. And to be honest, the same can be said for the cavalry. If a bunch of them would throw these boomerang swords at a group of Bokoblin horse riders, they could easily take them down. Or at bare minimum, they have a better chance. Thanks to this one weapon, they aren't just limited to their archers when it comes to a ranged attack, giving them a lot more options in combat. So personally, I think they have an advantage when it comes to weapons. In a lot of ways, Bokoblins and Lizzlefoes use the exact same stuff, but the one difference is this special sword. So when it comes to weapons, the Lizzlefoes certainly have an edge. Nothing massive, but still, it's something. Now the last thing we should look at is their special abilities. When it comes to this, the Bokoblins don't have a lot of them. I think their only special ability is that they're able to use mounts and that they're quite clever, which are strong perks, but the little foes have a whole lot more of them. They can use all kinds of elemental powers like ice, fire, and even electricity, and this already gives them a huge advantage. These abilities could be used to easily overpower any group of Bokoblin foot soldiers. Just think about it. The fire type could burn a lot of their weapons, turning them into ash, the ice type freezes them, making them easy prey, and the electrical type can disarm all of them instantly. Clearly, the common foot soldiers don't stand a chance against these guys. Sure, the normal ones might be doable, but as soon as these special types enter the scene, they are all screwed. The only way they could counter this is by using horses. These would allow them to circle their enemies and bombard them with arrows, as well as strike with a spear and then quickly ride away. But is this enough? Well, personally, I think no. Because if the Bokoblins don't watch out, they are still dead meat. Aside from that, the little foes are able to swim, which is something the Bokoblins can't do at all. They just drown. And this gives the Lizzlefoes another edge, especially because their bases are set on water. And that's not all. They can also blend into the environment, allowing them to easily ambush any Bokoblins. So when it comes to special powers, the Lizzlefoes win again, which means that they will most likely be the overall winner. While their tactics aren't the best compared to the well-organized Bokoblins, their weapons and powers are no match for them. Just imagine the battle. The Bokoblins want to cut down the Lizzlefoes for Horses, and so a group of foot soldiers and horsemen travel across the land to take them out. Along the way, they lose some of them thanks to hidden Lizzlefoes that surprise them and then attack them. And in the end, when they reach their base, they realize it's set on water. 
and are absolutely screwed from that point onward. The horses are useless, they can't get past the water to the base, and they are being bombarded by the little foes from the water, who are really hard to hit when they are swimming. And if the little foes are losing, they can always retreat into the water where they are safe. The Bokoblins can't get to them after all. And so, because of all of this, it's going to be really hard for the Bokoblins to win this fight. As long as the Little Foes act carefully. So, I'm quite certain that the Little Foes will win. However, I don't think we will ever see this war. Both of them are evil, and help Ganondorf after all. So, it's up to Link to actually take them out. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell so you won't miss anything, leave a like and tell me in the comments what you think about this video.